Good evening. I was intending to record another thrilling episode of my allotment diary, but it's raining today and there isn't really that much to report. So I've decided to tell you about my favourite plant, the potato. Like most of the plants we grow to eat, the potato belongs to one of 11 plant families, specifically the Solinaceae or nightshade family. Most of the plants we cultivate in this family originate in the Americas, uh, principally potatoes, tomatoes, eggplants or aubergines, peppers or capsicums, uh, everything from hot chilies to sweet bell peppers, and tobacco, of course. There is, though, another member of the family, not native to America, whose name gives you a clue to the, this family's recipe for success. It's called Belladonna, or Deadly Nightshade. Interestingly, one thing that is common to this family of plants is that they produce, many of them produce, uh, poisonous alkaloids in their leaves and other parts, uh, which make them distasteful to creatures that would otherwise eat them. Some members of the family are grown specifically for the alkaloids that they produce. Capsaicin, for example, is the chemical which gives peppers their fiery taste, and it's an alkaloid. Nicotine uh, is likewise an alkaloid and tobacco is grown specifically to produce it. So these alkaloids uh, can give the plants a measure of protection. In potatoes, for example, the green parts of the plant are poisonous and the growing plants are not subject to predation by things like slugs and snails, uh, leaf-eating insects like caterpillars, or sap suckers like aphids. If allowed to, the potato will produce a fruit which is identical to a green tomato, but don't make the mistake of eating it. It's poisonous. The potatoes themselves, if exposed to sunlight, will turn green and they too will become poisonous. In fact, potatoes in general aren't really palatable until they have been cooked. In the Andes in South America, where the potato originated, the Inca grew them as a staple food, and they produced hundreds of varieties of potato. The varieties were adapted to the varying conditions in which they grew, the altitude, the temperature and so on. And many of those varieties are grown today by the descendants of the Inca, the indigenous population of the Andes. There is one variety, for example, uh, which when it is first harvested is lethally poisonous and it has to be frozen solid before it can be used. And that's achieved by taking it to a higher altitude and leaving it overnight, where it is effectively freeze-dried. After that, it can be stored and kept for a number of years as an insurance against poor harvests. So potatoes are a reliable and productive crop and I feel that the year is underway 
when I have them planted and they're beginning to grow. They are not, however, entirely bulletproof. The main defence uh, against the viral and fungal infections to which they are prone is the use of clean and disease-free seed potato. And you should use fresh seed potato every year, uh, which is specifically grown for that purpose. You could hold back some of your potato crop for use as seed potatoes the following year, but that would be a big mistake. The most dangerous and difficult disease to which potatoes are prone is a fungal disease called Phytophthora, or more commonly known as potato blight. And it was this disease which caused the Irish potato famine in the 19th century. The combination of the bad practice of saving your own seed potatoes and a couple of wet years gave rise to a complete failure of the potato crop uh, on which many subsistence growers had become dependent. Those that could afford to emigrated and many of those who couldn't died. Even with good seed potatoes, blight can still take hold during a wet August, for example. And once it has taken hold, it's incurable. You can spray, but that will just slow down the progress of the disease. In spite of that, though, uh, with a little care and attention, potatoes can be a very productive plant and uh, certainly my favourite. See you later.